from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Imagine. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown Seattle at the AWS Imagine Education Conference. It's the second year of the conference. It's really successful so much now they have another education conference, or excuse me, Imagine Conference coming up for nonprofits, but this is the education one, about 800 people, and we're excited to have, I think they had representatives from like 40 countries here. It's amazing, such a small conference with such great global representation. And we've got our first guest all the way from Valencia, Spain. He is Inaki Bilbao Estrada, and the Vice Chancellor for Internationalization and Innovation at the CEU Universidad Cardinal Herrera. It's a mouthful, welcome. Thank you very much. So first off, impressions from the, uh, from the show, from the keynotes this morning. It was very impressive, the, the keynote uh, by, by the Andrew Go and Teresa Carson, uh, by uh, Amazon. Uh, we were impressed, we were included in the keynote, and we are very proud of having been included in the right. keynote uh, uh, for our Alexa skill. Right, so before we get into kind of what they talked about, let's back up a few steps in terms of what you were trying to accomplish as an institution. So give us a little bit of background on, on, the, uh, on the college, how big it was, and kind of what was going on and what you wanted to really do differently. We are an, an a Spanish university. We belong with the San Pablo Foundation, which owns three uh, universities in Spain, Barcelona, Madrid, and Valencia. We are a not-for-profit uh, universities. And in Valencia, in our case, we are very proud that we used to be a local university with only 300 international students eight years ago. And right now we have reached 2,500 international students, which represents around 30, 33% of the population of the university. We are right now uh, 8,000 undergraduate uh, students and 3,000 uh, graduate students. So, so that's pretty amazing. So as you said, you were really kind of a, a regional university and you decided you wanted more international students. Why did you want more international students? And, and then once you made that goal, what were some of the major objectives at the beginning of this process or, or problems that you had to overcome? It, it was a trend in higher, in higher education institutions, but for us it was very important for, for two reasons. One, the sustainability of the university, but also, and, and I think the main reason is that we want to have our students to have a global experience. So, uh, we want to become a global university based in Valencia, but we have right now more than 80 countries represented on campus. Wow. So what were some of the big hurdles that, that you saw that were, that, that were going to get in the way of attracting more of these international students? So it was very important for us to adapt all our processes to our students. And for this we have uh, a very helpful farm partner on campus. It was the IT department with Jose Lee Roche in charge of this department. And through technology, we have been able to escalate and automate, uh, get the automation of all this process in order to reach a bigger number of international students. So we have adapted all the processes to the needed of our international students, our new population of international students. Right, so you were highlighted today for a very specific thing, for a very specific device, which is Alexa, and, and voice as, as an interface. And we saw some of the Alexa stuff last year in terms of the kids asking it, you know, when, when is my test, is my homework due, these types of things. But you guys are actually taking it to the next level. And explain to the folks what you guys have done with Alexa. So we have used Alexa uh, to introduce a virtual assistant for all our students, national and international students. And one of the main uh, things that have been highlighted in the keynote is that is not only in English, but also in Spanish. So like this, we are covering uh, the two uh, most speak language on campus, English and Spanish. So it's by, so you've got a bilingual yeah. Alexis in the yeah. room. Yeah, so for us it was very important, as explained before, that technology is helping us to cover all the population of students, not only 
a part of them. Right. And using English as kind of the universal language, regardless of what their yeah. native tongue is. Yeah. So did you have to build all this from scratch? Did, how much was Amazon helping you to do the, the English to Spanish translation? Was it written in Spanish? How did some, some of those logistics so, work out? So we began six months ago with the project and with the help of Amazon. They were very, very, very uh, helpful for us uh, with Ana, Ana Cabez and and Juan Manuel Gomez from the UK team of Amazon and they guide us how to develop the Alexa skill for the goals that we set with them what were uh, what we want to achieve uh, with the virtual assistant for our students and and um, yeah so the skills are the things that you actually write yeah. so how many different skills did you write especially for your uh, students. So we, w what we are doing is to build only one, but we are integrating all the intents in one only slide. So we are integrating uh, um, intents related with uh, what's my next assignment on Blackboard, uh, which are my grades, uh, how can I book a room in in the library or in other spaces of the university, locations of the different service or professors of the university. We are integrating a lot of service but in one skill because we don't want the students to have to switch between skills. Right, right. So we were aiming to have one virtual assistant for the students in only one skill. Right. So that's interesting. I didn't even think about all the integration points that you have, but you've got integration points into all these yeah. other systems, the, 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 the room booking services, the library yeah. services, Blackboard, and the other the educational learning management services. Management system, so yeah. how many points of integration are there? But there are a lot. Uh, we are working right now. We are focused on around five, seven integration points because also we are integrating it with our CRM in order to have personalized a uh, message to uh, uh, different segments of our students depending on if they are uh, if they are due to to um, get some documentation to the register office so uh, we think that the integration with CRM uh, allows us to give personalized uh, message and notification to our students depending on the situation right so it's not a general notification for all the students on campus. Right, that's awesome. And uh, and again, highlighted in the keynote, really, I think is the first kind of bilingual um, implementation of Alexa. So that's that's terrific. I'm, I want to shift gears a little bit about innovation and transformation. We go to a lot of tech shows. We talk to a lot of big companies. Everybody wants to digitally transform and innovate. You know, traditionally, education hasn't been known as the most progressive. Um, industry in terms of transforming. You said right off the bat, that's your job, is about transformation and innovation. Where's that coming from? Is that from the competitive world in which you live? Is that a top-down leadership um, directive? What's what's kind of pushing, you know, basically the investment in this innovation uh, around your guys' school? So, uh, I believe that uh, education can be disrupted in the next five, ten years. So what we think at the university is that we have to be closer to this disruption. And in this sense, we are working a lot to improve the student experience of our students on campus, because if not, we think that it makes no sense to study on campus and you can go online. Right. So that's why we're using mm -hmm. technology to improve the student experience on campus so we are trying to avoid um, those things that have no value added for the students through technology and through this digital transformation in order that we have more time for this value added interaction between the staff academic and non-academic staff with the students right right so. and then how has the reception been with with the staff both the academic staff and the non-academic staff, because clearly the, the students are your customers, your primary customer, but they're a customer as well. So how have they uh, embraced this and, and got behind it? So as in all the institutions, uh, you have a part of the institution that is not so um, uh, in favor about these these innovations, but a big number of, of uh, professors and staff I have seen the benefits of um, 
not to have to answer email uh, Saturday night because the virtual assistant is 24 hours, seven days a week. So they see the benefits of how technology can give them more time for this value-added interaction with with uh, the students. And for this, in order to avoid only top-down uh, decisions, we have created digital ambassadors programs the, in which um, with this program what we do is to share with our professors and with our non-academic staff what we are planning and how they see the project. Right, right. And we are integrating their opinions and their suggestions in the program. So you're six months into it, you said, since you launched it? Yeah. Okay. I'm just curious if you could share any stories, biggest surprises, things that you just didn't didn't expect. I always like law of unintended consequences, you know, w w as you go through this process. So uh, one one of the things is, uh, so in Spain, Alexa was launched uh, uh, in November, or in last November, so it's very, very new, new, very new in Spain. Uh, there's no voice assistant um, uh, in the in in the last nine months. We, we have exploded, but we didn't have before. So the students have been very impressed that the university were working at this level with the with a technology so new because it was even new for them. Even if they are younger and they knew a lot about this technology, uh, but they were impressed that the university so quick react to the introduction of the right. technology. And the other point is through innovation, uh, we are also um, using Alexa for uh, the digital transformation of learning and teaching. And we have launched an innovation program um, for quizzes uh, for the students and we have a uh, uh, um, huge amount of volunteers that they want to to see how it works. Right, right. I'm just curious too to get your take on, on voice as an interface. You, you made an interesting comment before we turned the cameras on that you know, email just doesn't work very well for, for today's kids. They don't use it. They're not used to using it. Um, but, but voice still seems to really be lagging. It, it, you, I get an email from Google every, every couple of days saying, here, ask your Google Assistant this, or ask your Alexa this. You know, we still, we still haven't learned it. But from where you're sitting and, and seeing kind of this new way to interact and, and, as you said, get away from these emails in the middle of the night that ask, when's my paper due, and I could ask the assistant. How do you see that evolving? Are you excited about it? Do you see voice as really the centerpiece of a lot of these new innovations, or is it just one of many things that you're working on? So I think the, dif the difference is that uh, usually higher education institutions, we have, you we have abuse of email for communication with students with so massive amount of emails. I, I think what they feel with the voice, uh, the voice assistance is that they have the freedom to choose what they want to know or not. Mm. So if they can ask a voice a virtual assistant, as in which case, they have the freedom one, one, uh, when they want the information. Right. So I think it's a, a big difference between email. So in email, you decide when you send the information to the students. With voice technology, is the student that is the, uh, is the student who is asking when they want the information. Right. So I think it's an important shift for them. Yeah, it's just huge, because they never ask for the yeah. email. Yeah, <laughs> no, they, they, they and, <laughs> and after they tell us that it was an important information, that they didn't check the email, so right. They, right. they complain that they don't have the right information. Right, well, Naki, thank you for uh, for sharing your story, and congratulations on this project. Sounds like you're you're just getting started, you got yeah. a long ways to go. Thank you so much. All right, thank, thank you. you. Lisa Naki, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're in downtown Seattle at AWS Imagine Education Conference. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Oh,